Uh, good morning, Keith. It's uh, March 9th here right now, about 10 a.m. Central Time. So we thought we'd do a follow-up call with Keith Wiener from Monetary Metals, just give people a call action. We had a lot of interest on uh, Monetary Metals, so uh, just start out and we'll ask Keith specific questions that everybody had. So Keith, we had a lot of people had just trust issues and just wanted to understand all the risk involved. So if you could just comment on some of the biggest risks that you see uh, that you guys have with lease contracts. So um, obviously a very important question uh, and, and a very sober one as, as we look at what's going on in the world today and things that everybody thought were safe, you know, weren't. But rather than going through the litany of all the risks that a gold lease doesn't have that exposure to the banking system would have, um, we can just talk about, you know, leasing specifically. So number one, there is no such thing as a return without risk. If someone's promising you a return without a risk, run fast and far. <laughs> um, no. Yes. So what we're doing is we're um, putting the gold in the hands of productive businesses who are using it as inventory or work in progress. So what could go wrong? Well, the owner could steal the gold. I mean, one of the things that gold has always had and one of the reasons why it was adopted as money is that it's very portable. A very small, light, little package um, you know, when you think about uh, crude oil versus gold, the amount of crude oil, even at today's prices, to buy, let's say, a nice new car, it would fill a swimming pool. That same amount of gold I mean, you, would be the size of your iPhone. You could tuck it in your pocket and walk out the door with it. So uh, the owner of the business that we lease the gold to could gather up the gold, stick it in his pocket, and fly to a non-extradition uh, country. That I mean, that could happen. So um, maybe why don't I talk about the risk first, and then I'll talk about how we, you know, try to try to mitigate um, the risks. Sounds good. In addition to the owner, obviously the employees of the firm may have access to the gold, um, so they could potentially steal it and and uh, you know abscond. There's you know flood, fire, you know those types of uh, things, and then break-ins, obviously, and then there can be mistakes. You know, if we're dealing with a bullion dealer, and then Somehow the system has a glitch or somebody fat fingers it and instead of shipping an ounce uh, to a customer, it ship a thousand ounces and then a thousand ounces of you know, gold uh, go that, you know, to somebody who shouldn't. And um, you know, good luck ever trying to recover that from a retail client of a bullion dealer. You, know, you just don't want to be there. You know, if, if we're leasing internationally, I suppose, as you look at the world today, um, and we do a bit differently from the way we looked at the world in, let's say, January, or pre-COVID for that matter. You know, there's a risk of what if the jurisdiction goes bad or what if there's a war or something like that. Um, so um, we've always tried to be careful about jurisdictions and, and continue to be, but, uh, so, so each deal is presented to the um, investor uh, via a slide deck that, uh, you know, we try to encapsulate you know, obviously, who's who are these people? Who's the business? What are they doing? But also, what are all the things that go wrong that you could lose your gold? And then the final section, you know, what do we do uh, to to try to mitigate those risks? So the, the investor can see the jurisdiction and make a decision. So we did a recent lease to a gold refiner in Andorra. So Andorra is one of those little micro European nations. It was in the mountains in between France and Spain. Yep. So do you think that's a good jurisdiction? Bad jurisdiction? Um, we think it's a good jurisdiction, but our investors are free to form their own opinion. If they don't like that jurisdiction, they can say, I'm, I'm, I'm passing on this one at all. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want my gold going there. We have, um, another lease with a bullion dealer in Malaysia. So Malaysia, a very different jurisdiction, obviously Southeast Asia. Um, you know, how do people feel about that? Um, what I can say at this point is that lease has been going since 2018. So, um, you know, it's been, it's been a good lease and, uh, you know, they pay consistently. So what do we do to try to mitigate the risks? The first is to understand the um, internal and operational controls in the business. Um, you know, if this is a business that's a mom and pop jewelry store, we generally can't do a lease there because the gold is just basically sitting there and the owner can take it. And that, if, that industry has a bad reputation that when things are going bad, uh, basically, they'll sell anything that isn't nailed down, and by the time the creditors get wind that anything's anything's awry, you know, you show up and basically, 
all the fittings and fixtures are gone, and all you see are the holes in the carpet where the wires go, and um, you know everything's gone, and certainly the jewelry is, is long gone. So there's no operational controls there. There's no internal controls there. Reporting systems are what you'd expect out of a mom and pop business, and um, that's not you know uh, uh, anywhere near you know sufficient. Um, so we're looking for you know businesses that have procedures. Uh, and not just video cameras, but you know, who can get into the vault. Uh, in a lot of cases, it requires a pair of people. So they assign every, every employee is either on the A team or the B team. And it has to have one person from A, one person from B to unlock you know, the code. Everybody who's unlocked the code has logged. Uh, everybody's on camera at all times. And then what are the inventory controls? What are the internal monitoring and reporting systems? Do they have an ERP system that knows every SKU? every item, every minute of every day, um, and can they report that to us? So um, we have their server connect to our server and report on a daily basis, you know, all the inventory, and do we trust that that reporting, what what are the systems that keep that reporting accurate? I mean, don't just, don't just send me a, a sheet that says it's all good. You know, how, how do we know? So we, we drill into that to really understand the systems, the procedures, who's signing off on things, what the dual signatures are going on internally and, and, and so on to, uh, to make that, you know, something that we can, uh, that we can trust. In addition to that, um, we use insurance. So we want to see certain insurance policies carried by the lessee. So if there, um, if there's a break in, obviously that has to be covered, but we're also looking for what if their employees commit a crime and steal the gold, errors and omissions, what if a mistake is made. And then finally, monetary metals, we carry an additional insurance policy at our level that will cover, uh, you know, the cases where maybe the lessee's policy wouldn't pay. Um, so we try to have uh, sort of multiple redundant uh, insurance policies to cover all this. And then at the end of the day, uh, it's about knowing the people. And we have um, kind of a 360 degree, uh, you know, diligence process. And it's about getting to know the people getting to know what they're about, what do they really want, how do they think, what makes them tick, um, probably to a greater degree than a, a conventional you know, bank would, would take that approach. Um, and then at the end of the day, we're, you know, we're rendering our own judgment that we think this is, uh, this is, is it either there is or isn't uh, you know, safe to do. So what I can say is we've had any number of times where we've said to our clients, okay, you know, the next lease is coming, the state, and some, and, and one or two cases, this is who it's with, and then we didn't bring the lease. And um, I, 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 all day long, I prefer to have the egg on my face of telling everybody we have a new deal, and then not have it, rather than bring a deal that I know isn't right, to something that's just not good about it, and um, bring it anyway because I made a promise or whatever. Oh, well, finally, we have um, corporate guarantees, personal guarantees from the principals in many cases. Uh, and we spell out all this, you know, what we've done to mitigate the risk. We spell that in the slide deck so everybody can see, okay, is there a PG here in this deal or not? Um, and then how do you feel about that? So that, that kind of gives the um, high level overview of risk and, and what we do. Yeah, very thorough and in depth. And um, so, as like a place like Malaysia, I've actually been three times since 2017. I <laughs> love Malaysia. Um, when you go there, do you know, like, have you met the people in person in Australia, Malaysia, and Dora? Are these just uh, close relationships that you have from context that you know they're on the ground? So, are you doing boots on the ground yourself, or is this context? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I'm, obviously, as we scale, um, I, I won't be able to necessarily meet everybody per personally so far. I have, yeah, uh, but yes, I have personal relationships with the folks in Malaysia, I'm broken bread with them many times been in to see their operation. So in that particular lease, um, and this, this is, I, I, I can't say it's, it's not every lease, but um, it's a fairly common feature in a lot of our leases, is that there's third party custody. So the lessee doesn't have the gold like on their premises. The gold is held, their, so their business model is they sell small retail sized bullion products. And in Malaysia, the uh, salaries are a lot lower. Yeah. So retail size is one gram, two gram, five gram, 10 gram bars yep. uh, through the retail bank branches. So you walk into your bank and then it's like, you know, you can apply for a home mortgage. You can do this, you can do that. And then there's a sign that says, buy gold, ask your teller. 
and the bank will sell it to you. So the banks are the custodians of the gold, and the gold is in you know two hundred some odd different branches of four of the big banks in Malaysia. So even if the lessee were to go bad, it would be very difficult for them to to get any significant amount of that gold, and then the banks are, are responsible for it. So we've been in to see a number of bank branches. There's a um, an external auditor that uh, I've also met personally a couple of times. Uh, that's going from branch to branch, um, you know, on a rotation, um, you know, counting counting all the inventories and sending us reports. Uh, but absolutely, it is about meeting people, boots on the ground. You know, what do they like in their natural environment? How does this work? You know, the culture in Southeast Asia is different. <laughs> no <Asia>. doubt. <laughs> and and uh, understand, you know, what's 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 right for Malaysia and how does it work there and, and all that. But people would be surprised at the economic freedom that Malaysia has. And, and you know, in terms of even I give an example, I, I even rented out a house in Phuket in Thailand for a couple of years and actually had some gold store there. Um, you know, why I still is operating the business, you know, here in the States. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a, an interesting culture for sure. Yeah, and it then, is. I mean, in, in some ways, this is less free than here in America, but in other ways, we were just so stacked high and deep with regulation. Yeah. That you know, so I think it's a lot easier to start a business there. No at doubt. This point than here. No doubt. Um, and then one of the other big questions we had was just uh, what kind of contract or certificate would you provide um, on a lease? Just on any Pacific lease, what certificate or contract that somebody would would get? So there's a, um, a lease agreement that um, uh, is, a, is a sign between both parties. That is between the investor and monetary metals. The so monetary metals act as the counterparty to all parties. So all the we're aggregating obviously gold from multiple investors, um, and so we lease that from the investors, and then we sublease that with their express consent to the permitted sub lessee. So they get a side contract, and then every month we have a uh, account statement that we generate that shows okay, you have ten ounces in this lease and five ounces in this one. This is the interest that's being paid. And, Okay, great. And then um, the other question we had, this was a Pacific one, was the, um, you know, you mentioned the Delaware Depository was the primary uh, place that you had storage and the storage was free, but uh, somebody commented on just how safe, secure and insured uh, the depository is if you had any um, issues with that and just, uh, if you could just comment on that. No, we haven't had any issues. Every year, you know, their, their auditor contacts us to say, is this correct? You know, the Delaware Depository's records say, as of December 31, you know, 5 p.m., you know, this is what your, uh, you know, inventory looks like. Um, and of course, we know what our own, own inventory is supposed to look like through our own uh, tracking. And um, we, uh, um, you know, we validate that and make sure that everything's right and that uh, we have not had an issue. I know they carry a big insurance policy through uh, the major insurance market. I'm not aware that there's ever been a, a payout or an incident on, on that. Okay. Uh, well, I, I believe yeah. there's the largest non-bank precious metals vault uh, in the U.S. Yeah. Because of the amount of assets on the roof. Yep. And then the other, you, you commented on this, but product that you do accept, so obviously non-numismatics, but what gold do you prefer? Uh, you prefer like one ounce bars, 10 ounce bars, what, what's easiest for you? I mean, any, anything that's gonna be a recognized product. So, you know, recognized refineries, you know, eagles, maples, croupons, you know, if you start getting into Mexican onzas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. What, what happens is the bid estimate gets wider. We just can't pay out as well. Right. Um, you know, on those things, because you know the market for that, at least you know in Mexico, maybe there's a robust market for it, but the market for that here is not you know so robust. So uh, you know, but any I mean anything recognized, anything LBMA accredited, um, you know Johnson Matthey, Pamp, Inglehard, you know, okay, Inglehart, right. I mean any, yeah. any of the major one. Okay, and then yeah. any, any of the normal sizes. I mean, I guess retail people don't generally have hundred ounce bars or four hundred ounce bars in their possession. And probably shouldn't yeah. for a lot of reasons. <laughs> right. um, you know, but we have people send us kilo bars. Uh, okay. Not a problem. Uh, and then you said Comex bars, obviously, okay, too. Right. 
Okay. And then, so now if I gave you a thousand gold eagles, would you give me a thousand gold eagles back or a hundred gold eagles? Is it tick for tack or what product do you give back? That was the other big question that we had. So, so to get into it, at least, basically we need something that's fungible that we can deal in fractions. So you know, with, with the client's consent, we convert that to um, gold pool. Mm -hmm. So basically that's backed by a stack of bars, but you can have a fraction thereof. Um, so for eagles, right now there's a pretty significant premium. Yeah. So if you gave us a thousand eagles, you would get, I don't know what the premium is off the top of my head, and I, I don't deal in this every day. But about 4%, about 3.9%, 4%. Um, right, so we're, we're looking at the bid price, it might be a bit less than that, but you would end up with a thousand, a thousand twenty-five or a thousand thirty or a thousand thirty-five, something like that, ounces of a pool, and that is fungible, and that can come in at leases or bonds or anything else that you want to do. At the end, when you want to redeem, then you say, okay, what, how do you, what form do you want it in? Do you want us to liquidate it and wire it to cash? Do you want a product? And then you're subject to whatever the premium on that product is at that time. So if the premium is lower then you might end up converting back uh, you know, at, at even. Um, if the premium is higher, then obviously there's a penalty there. Or you can say, you know what, it would be more efficient to get kilo bars. Give me 10 coins and give me the rest as, as kilo bars. So it's up to the, the client's discretion but the, but the main thing is at the time you're going into whatever release, you know, that has to be pooled. And so uh, you're subject to the bid, the bid at that time and then the offer when you want to get out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes complete sense. And that's right there, crystal clear in the contract, in the lease. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if someone wants to move forward, who should they contact? Because I know you're extremely busy. So have them contact Addison Quayle. Yeah, so um, Addison is our VP of Relationships. Okay. Um, we have our um, phone number published on our website, um, which I don't know off the top of my head. I'll link it. I'll link it in the comment box. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm gonna call that, and um, Addison and one of his uh, team will uh, call you back promptly. Happy to help anybody get set up and get started. Perfect. Well, I hope people act on this. This is, you know, I think you answered everything that people asked. So. I really appreciate it. And well, and uh, yeah, thanks for taking the time, Keith. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. And I hope people get a call action and uh, contact Addison and uh, uh, let's keep in touch. Absolutely. All right. Hey, big thank you. Thank you. All right. Take fist count, man. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Make most of your day. Thanks, man.